Well, hello, people of YouTube. Over here in the UK, it's a rainy, horrible, windy Monday morning, so I can't fly. So instead, I want to talk about batteries and battery health. Um, why? Because I had a couple of incidents which has made me change how I charge batteries, um, and I've got some new function in my new charger. So what I was using is one of these uh, IMAX B6 chargers. I think it's even a copy. Basic four button charger, um, except you can only charge one battery at a time. In order to keep my batteries healthy, I like to put them in storage mode uh, and then be able to charge them up just before I fly. To do that, and especially when you're talking about mini quads, you're talking eight batteries to get out there, even for a, you know, a reasonable hour of flying, that's, you're just gonna need eight hours to charge unless you use some sort of parallel charging which I was doing, but I had some problems. The first board I had, which I can't still find a picture of, um, I had this short out and flames and magic smoke. Ooh, that was scary. So I bought a new one, which I thought was better. And I've been using this for a while. You can charge up to six batteries um, on a balanced charge. And I, I tended to do four and four, because uh, I've, I've got eight 2200s, eight, uh, 1300s, or it's, I did have until Friday week ago when the balance leads of these two 2200s, I've sort of taped them together so they can't short anymore, uh, set on fire and um, I sort of had flames coming out of here at one point. That was pretty scary and I thought I am not using a balance board anymore because it was all plugged in right, um, no issues, but it just seems that the balance charging and me are not mixing and is ending up in flames. So I've gone over to a new charger, which is this rather larger uh, fella, which is a Tonergy, I think Tonergy Quattro. Uh, it's got four ports, so you can charge four at a time, different types of batteries. Unfortunately, Hobby King were out of balance uh, boards, so I'm still waiting for those to arrive from China. So I can only charge one at a time. However, the interesting point about these um, is they allow you to test the internal resistance of your battery. This is an excellent way of looking at the health of your battery, although I really couldn't find much information about it. Ironically enough, on the charger ports was this sign saying, read manual before use, and there was no manual in the box. So I wanted to know how the um, internal resistance measurement worked, looked at the manual online, nothing in there, looked at manuals for other um, Turnergy chargers which have this feature, and there was just nothing of it. So I looked and I found some references in some heli forums and stuff. So I'm making this video to say what I found about it. Um, although I think at best, it's gonna be dependent on the application you use the batteries for. Um, if you've got an ACID battery, it's always gonna hold up fine, probably just for running um, something low amp like uh, a VTX or something. But if you're wanting to run multi-copters uh, and put a lot of amps through, then obviously they're gonna be rubbish for that. So although the, I don't know how accurate the measurements are or how well it suits your application, you can at least look at the internal resistance measurements you get as a comparison. Uh, if you've got one that's very low, that's a good battery. If you've got one that's high, it's a bad battery. Quite how bad that is depends on what you're using it for. But by measuring them and looking at them, you'll get a good idea of at what point is the battery becoming bad or not. So the batteries I'm going to test are a few of the ones I fly with quite often. I've got a, a couple of my 2200s here. One's from, and I label them so I know exactly when I got them, so what to expect from age. This one's from June 2014. This one's slightly new from February 2015. I always keep them in storage charge no puffiness, they're looking good and they're performing absolutely fine at the moment. I've got a Nanotech uh, 1.3, uh, this is the 45 to 90C which I use in the mini quads just to free sell from February 2015 as well. Um, again, not puffy, always keeping storage charged, it seems to be absolutely key to the health of my batteries. Um, but they are worked quite hard so it'd be interesting to get a measurement from there. One of the new uh, Multistar uh, 5.2 4-cell batteries for my large quad. It hasn't been used much, um, so I'd expect it to be pretty good, but I thought I'd just check it 
because <laughs> it's quite an expensive battery to get. Then I thought I'd look at some of the batteries that I hadn't taken great care of. So this is one from 2012. I used to fly two 2200s in parallel on my uh, old 450 quad. A little bit puffy. Um, it was taken reasonable care of. I, I don't think I was too strict about storage charts. I might have just charged it up. Um, and I noticed when I was doing some launches on my wing using these batteries um, on launch where it's only pulling about 20 amps it was going down to under 9.9 .9 volts instantly so I'm expecting that to be quite bad then I thought what are the worst batteries I've got How what what's the benchmark for really bad so I've got this one which has been labelled tree uh, this was on my AXN and got stuck up a tree overnight so I'd expect it to be in bad shape it also is puffy and it it's one I just kept charged. I, I wasn't really aware of storage charging or how that helped a battery. Uh, and finally, because I had to have some competition for this, these are the initial batteries I got for my Freesale Mini Quad. You can, you can see that hopefully the roundness on this is really puffy and it went like this instantly. Um, I think we just pulled too many amps. Although it's a 25 to 50 C, um, they were crap really. These, these, these first nanotechs I had just went boom, all of them. So I expect that to be pretty bad. Uh, but let's have a look, let's have a comparison and see how they, they hold up. So here's the charger and the power supply, which you need to get separately. Just about every charger in the world seems to run the same firmware, so all of the settings should feel very familiar, except for this extra function of testing the internal resistance. First up is the June 2014-2200, giving a, a 1, 3 and 1 milliohm resistance on its cells. Now the reference I found in the heli form from five years ago is as follows. Packs that are as good as new have 0 to 5 milliohm resistance per cell. Packs that are still fairly good are between 5 and 10 milliohms per cell. Packs that start to feel weak between 10 and 20 per cell. And packs that will barely get a heli into hover above 20 per cell. Obviously helis have their own peculiarities. And this is where it's a case of comparing for what's working well and what's not and seeing how the resistance compares here. There'll be some differences in the type of plane you're flying or the type of multicopter you're flying as well. Next up is my 2200 from February the 15th. This does even better with just one milliohm resistance per cell, as does my 5200 Multistar 4S. Next up is the 1300 3Ss. Now I tested all eight of these as I was interested to see how they compared. Some had just one milliohm resistance per cell, a few of them had up to three milliohm resistance on one of the cells but all, all in all very good so here's a rubbish battery this is the 2200 from 2012 and it confirms what we knew the internal resistance is high and thus when we try and put amps through it it uh, it can barely hold so in competition for the worst batteries first up is the tree lipo wow look at that third cell is practically off the chart i'm not uh, going to be using this on anything at all and here's the puffy 1300 nano. Pretty knackered, but not as knackered as the tree lipo. So now I know what a good and a bad lipo looks like in terms of internal resistance. But what I really need is a lipo that's kind of gone off the boil. It was performing well, it's starting to perform badly. So I can put that on my internal resistance meter and I can check what sort of readings I'm getting. Uh, and that should hopefully let me predict uh, how much longer my lipos will last depending on what sort of IR they're getting. So I do intend to revisit this um, when I have some of my LiPos start to fail a little bit more and see what sort of uh, readings I'm getting. In the meantime, of course, if you've been doing this yourself and already have some findings, please post up your thoughts along with what you fly so that myself and other people might be able to use your data to try and check our batteries out. The single piece of advice I can give anybody that's just starting out and wondering the best way of looking after their batteries is storage charge. When I first started flying, I always used to keep my batteries charged just in case it was going out. But they went bad pretty quickly. They really started going off the boil and the flight times went right down. These days, um, all my batteries are held in storage charge if I'm not going to be able to fly them in the next day or two. I always land free cell wise on 10.5 as sort of my minimum voltage and put them out to storage charge and then balance charge them up and that seems to work really well. I've got 18 month old batteries and they're still lasting nicely. 
But having now rambled on for over 10 minutes when I thought I was doing a quick video, for now, farewell. <laughs>